Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast is a Christ-centered podcast established in 2019 and hosted weekly by Pastor Chris Busher. Addressing a host of topics such as the Great Commission, Christian discipleship, and often featuring interviews with special guests who are experts in their field. The views and events expressed on this podcast and all related materials belong solely to their author and not necessarily to the author's employer, organization, committee, or other group or individual. While all attempts are made to present accurate information, some information may become outdated over time. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast makes every attempt to timely update any and all such information. Without further delay, here's another powerful episode of Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. We're in. All right, great. Yeah. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah. So thanks for being here on the podcast with me today. It's great to have you. And we're going to talk about your book a little bit. And so before we do, can I just have you share a little bit about your testimony with us? The next five to ten minutes of your your story, a little background of you for the listeners to get to know you a little better. Okay, so I found the Lord when I went to church with my family. But to really find God and and to come into your fullness of not only Christ and, and the kingdom, um, I really met the Lord through fasting. And, and when I went without is when I found all the work that God wanted me to do. Because when you're giving up this life to take on the works of Christ, you begin to uh, inherit not only what he wants you to do for his kingdom, but um, also the, uh, the abundance and, and the blessing that comes with it as well. So after I started really fasting and doing the works that not only Christ and, and the prophets did in the Holy Bible, that is when my life really changed because I began preaching, I began ministering, I really became born again. I had a new mindset, and I was totally awoken to Christ. So I'm going to have to say by, yeah, by the whole fasting experience and spending time with God alone through the whole ministry, and not only church, but fellowshipping with uh, believers who were ministering alongside with me as well, that that really, it gave me a testimony, it gave me my story, and it gave me the works that I have now, uh, not only in my book, but in also the music and the Christian films that I do as well. So I'm going to have to say that um, church was a big part of not only learning the whole ceremony of worshiping God, but fasting and doing the actual works that not only Christ did, but the prophets did was how I became to really formulate my own testimony, my own story, and and gave me the drive and will to do what I do today, which is write, produce, film movies, and to save souls for the kingdom of God. You're listening to the Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. We'll be right back after this quick word from our sponsors. At a time when there are already many modern English Bible translations, potential readers wonder, why another translation? In response, it needs to be stated that while no Bible translation is perfect, the modern evangelical version is unique in certain respects. Specifically, it is intended to provide a bold witness to the good news about Jesus Christ in modern colloquial English, hence the title, Modern Evangelical Version. Find this Bible today at modernbible-translation.com. Do you need godly advice in business? Irene Jones just released a book titled The 10 Spiritual Little Nuggets on Business That Will Reshape the Way You See Business. This godly inspired book will help you to navigate your way through starting a business or through your existing business. Find this book today on Amazon by searching 10 Spiritual Little Nuggets on Business. And you said it it was through fasting, and I would say that that's an unusual way, I think an unusual path, because I don't know if we talk about fasting enough, and I don't know if it's something that a lot of people actually apply into their lives enough either. What would you say about that? Um, You're right, because that is... It's it's not the quote unquote what you would call norm. It's actually a it's a very uh, strong discipline. It takes time. It takes patience, 
and it takes the will, just like Christ had patience to lay down his life and go to the cross. It's um, it's kind of an extreme. It's um, it's a practice that that when you get into prayer, when you get into church, when you get into faith, when you get into um, Christianity, it's um, it's something that God sets you apart for. Um, you really get consecrated. You get deep into the wisdom and knowledge of what's already been done, and then you also get to formulate your own story. Um, I'm going to have to say that fasting is definitely, it's not the norm, but it is a good discipline for anybody looking for a breakthrough, looking for the next level of their their faith walk, not only with Christ, but, but for their own life to be changed as well. So fasting, it's it definitely changed my life, and I know that if anyone's listening, that it will help them 100% and just give them so much more for the kingdom of God. Because instead of feeding the flesh in this life, you're in turn turning your eyes to God, and you're asking God not in just prayer and tongues, but you're asking Him spiritually, what do you want me to do? Um, what can be done through me? And that's totally a bigger pathway to know God in Christ more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks for, get, for going into that a little bit more. And for our listeners that aren't familiar with fasting, can you just give a brief uh, definition of that? Okay, fasting is when you give up food to pray better. So instead of turning to food, or maybe it may it can even be like TV, or maybe something that you do every day, you in turn you discipline yourself to give up that passion, to give up that um, plate of food, or to give up that viewing of things going on in this life, and you turn your eyes to God. Mm -hmm. So when you fast, you can either fast from TV, from food, from coffee. It can be something simple. Um, And when you do that, you begin to awaken your mind because you're disciplining yourself. So you're not focusing on the normal aspects of this life, but you're awakening spiritually to God, especially when you do it in the spirit and prayer and to God directly. He answers you. And once the Spirit takes over, you begin to acknowledge God, and, and that's when you really get to walk by faith. Mm-hmm. So fasting can be anything from giving up TV to giving up food to giving up something that you do every day or coffee, just to spend more time with God, um, just to cherish what um, He has for you already in His Word, and also to uh, receive the revelation, receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit, receive all the blessings that God has done through Christ for us, and what we can also do more for His kingdom as well. Well, I think that's a great definition. (laughs) So if you guys have never fasted before, pray into it. Ask the Lord to reveal it to you. I think, like you said, Mike, this is a very powerful thing, and it's led me in a lot of breakthrough myself in life and going through addiction. It's what gave me the results that I needed to see. And so, yeah. Amazing. Great way to start off the podcast, Mike. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. So, Mike, just before we get into some of these questions here, uh, where are you from today? Where are you located? I'm from San Bernardino, California. Um, I was born in California. I'm 34 years old. Um, It's in Southern California. It's by the Mojave Desert. Um, It's just north of San Diego, to give you a bigger picture. And it's just east of Los Angeles. And it's San Bernardino County, and I live in the city of San Bernardino. Great. And what are you doing right now, Mike? Are you a pastor? Are you? Um, I just published my first book. I was an evangelist. I've been an evangelist for maybe going on eight or nine years now. Okay. Um, I've been saved for, let's say, about 13 years now since I got baptized. Um, But the biggest thing that I've done with my ministry was from preaching in the street. I'm trying to take it to, I took it to the studio to record Christian worship. Um, I was working on this book the whole time, and I was also working on Christian films. But now I'm starting to publish and trying to get the word out about what God has done through me and mostly the promise of, of his second coming and rapture as well. And so, yeah, we're here today to talk about your book, The Holy Book of Mike Kettle. Do you want to go into that a little bit deeper? Yeah, sure. Kind of give the listeners a brief introduction of the book without giving too much away. Okay. Um, The Holy Book of Mike Kettle. Um, I studied the scriptures in the Bible for a long time. And what God had given to me through that whole time of preaching, witnessing, fasting, was my own story. So 
what I did was I sat down at the drawing table. I took in all of this information, blessing, all the promises, and I went before God. And it took me eight years to write this book, but my, my main message was to touch bases on the second coming and rapture and to tell my own story through works of faith that can inspire many by it not being a normal book, but being a more personal book of the life story that God has done through me. I don't want to give away all of the details because I want the reader to be excited, but um, this book will definitely give you a supercharge of, of, of faith, of worship, um, of inspiration, and it's definitely the faith of the one true God of the Bible and all of his promises kind of wrapped into one. So I tried to get as much information in this book as I could for the reader to just totally be blown away by the presence and power of God. And the inspiration for the title of this book, where did you get that from? Okay, so the Holy Book of Mike Kettle was the message that I wanted my readers to grasp so that they could open their eyes and minds to the faith of God instilled in me personally a message of Christ's second coming and rapture. So pretty much I wanted to portray my own story in a biblical format mm -hmm. in context that would enlighten readers with my own journey of faith in a book that could answer their questions about the second coming and rapture. What inspired me to write is what God called me to do, which is to feed his people the faith of the second coming of the Lord and, and rapture of his church. To testify of my own walk of faith, spiritual journey, and faith in the one true God of the Bible, with the knowledge and wisdom that I obtained in serving God and fasting and ministry to represent his kingdom and will and to be a prophet of his law and the return of Christ. So pretty much I wrote the book with many aspects of presenting God's blessings in Psalms and scripture and a testament of my own life story that will hopefully reach readers and believers for Christ's second coming and give them the hope and the one true God of their praise through the life and light of my own story. And how long has this book been on the market? Uh, it just came out, let's say, I published it in April this year. It just came out. It went public, I believe, last month. My publisher is Ingram. Um, they're a publisher in the U.K. and in Australia and here in the United States. And I have the, the digital book available online where you can buy that for thirty nine ninety nine, And I also have the hard copy, um, which is about $70.00. The thing is, it's a very big book. It has 800 pages. It's not wow. like a normal book. Yeah, it has 800 pages, so it's pretty big. It, it's pretty much my life story and work all wrapped up into one. And um, I'm just hoping that it'll reach readers in this time of testing and that it will give them hope, give them uh, wisdom. It will challenge them, open their eyes to see what God can do in their life, and that I can be a living testament of Christ then. And his second coming. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, yeah, it took eight years to make this book to complete it. And so, yeah, I can totally understand. 800 pages, that's a lot. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot because I, I'm totally inspired by the Bible and the canon and the way it's presented with all the prophet books. You have the law, you have the Psalms, you have the Gospels and Scripture, you have the Revelation. So that inspired me to write out a masterpiece that could... Um, give wisdom, give knowledge in every aspect of the, the, the teachings of Christ. Because when you read the Bible, there's so many ways that God communicates with you through his law, through, through his Psalms, and it's all prophetic. So that inspired me a lot to not only be a prophet, but to um, put together something that a reader could enjoy and be biblically inspired by it too as well. Yeah. All right. And I was my next question was, how is this book different than other books? Well, I think I can answer that myself, that this is definitely different than a, your regular Christian book out there. Yes. A lot of Bible study books, Christian books, or books from church are course books, like with specific subjects, disciplines, and certain teachings of faith. But the Holy Book of Mike Kettle is more of a story of my faith journey that will definitely inspire, intercede, and instruct all who read it. A story that takes the Bible to its extreme and into the second coming and rapture in works of God that are promised in the Bible and that can be done and performed by all. So this book will definitely make people of all faiths think about the works of God that can be done by a prophet and how God can use them just as he did need to reach people for the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, um, it's going to be very um, challenging. It's going to be a new aspect of, of, of faith 
And I, I'm just hoping that I can be that messenger that Christ sent and uh, the prophet, the one true God, anointed to to teach, to teach his second coming, to teach his rapture, to um, bless all by my own life story. Mm-hmm. And so this book is not only for Christians, it can be of anyone of any faith to be inspired by God and the works that he does and through the biblical ways as well? Yes, yes. Um, Also included in it, I mean, there are so many nations, there's so many people, there's so many tongues. And in today's world, when you begin to grow in faith, you begin to not accept things, but you begin to see things in a more mature way. And I'm hoping that this book can really do that. I was at work today, and I was in prayer with God, and I was thinking, what can I do to further this book? And I and he told me that he wants to get it translated because there's so many people in the world, but they don't speak our language, but they still have the same faith in God, which gives them their own twist on their religion. But I'm hoping that I can personally present a, a work of faith that can reach them in a new way too as well. Mm-hmm. All right. What do you think is the overall message in these 800 pages that you would like the listener to see? The overall message that I would like readers to take from the Holy Book of Mike Kettle is that God can use them in a mighty way, that each believer in the Lord and the second coming rapture can be a testament of faith. They can be a pillar of works for God to stand on and a disciple and prophet of his kingdom, that there are still higher works of faith in the prophecies in the word and the second coming of Christ, and just like my story, they too can blossom, harvest, and inherit many mighty works for the one true God of the Bible to pour out his ink through their hands as servants for the kingdom of heaven. So overall, I would like to inspire many to become a prophet of God like me, a teacher of God's word and promise of a second coming of rapture, and to take on these works themselves to make all things greater for the kingdom of heaven. So pretty much, I'm... I, I, I'm hoping that it will inspire them, it will give them a pathway and enlightenment to know God, and it will test their faith to see where they stand as well so that they can become greater too. Mm -hmm. And Mike? Yes, sir? Do you have any future projects in mind? Anything else that you're working on or planning on? I do. I have a lot. So this is my first published book. This is like the main project I was working on for, like I said, eight years. I also do Christian rap and Christian films. Wow. And right now I'm working on getting them. Yeah, I'm I'm working on getting them ready for publication. First, I would like to reach the readers with my book of my testimony, so they can know where I'm coming from, what God's doing through me. And second, by the Christian rap and the sound of worship. And then third, by movies, because acts of faith are always inspiring, and they're also another great way to learn a fellowship for the kingdom of God and to teach as well. So, in moving forward, I would like to publish my series of movies to shed the light to many in the form of the gospel, which to date for any person is much more pleasing to hear a song or or watch a movie because you get to illustrate, you get to soundtrack, and you get to bring all of this power and emotion into the presentation of the gospel. So doing all all of the the music and films, it's, um, it's very inspiring not only to me, but I'm hoping that it can reach thousands for the kingdom of heaven. I've got a lot of responses online to my music, especially because no one's ever heard music with the Holy Spirit in it. And when they turn to my page, it's like, wow, they get blown away. I've had a lot of comments where they say uh, tingles ran up their spine, that um, the Holy Spirit just blew them away, that they were totally just awestruck in wonder. And to hear that kind of testimony, it's it's very inspiring to work harder to reach more people for the kingdom of heaven Mm -hmm. through music and movies, too. Yeah. And so your testimony, Mike, is that something that a lot of people have been able to relate with? Um, I would say so because um, I was teaching evangelism for a long time, and, and the way I disciple, I do it one step at a time. And, um, if it can be through a book, if it can be through music, if it can be through a movie, then then that's great because that's something that that people can share in faith, have in common, and that they it, it's just like monkey see and monkey do because when someone sees or learns with their hands, they grasp that concept, and hopefully they can take my works or their works of what God wants to do in them to the next level too. So it's just like a stepping stone or a ladder 
just to share God's kingdom. And if I can be that testimony and that basis of faith, then great, because um, I've been doing it for a long time, but now I'm trying to take it to the next level with the books, music, and movies as well. That's a lot of things on your plate, it sounds like. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. And I love it, but I'm having that patience right now to do one thing at a time, and I'm hoping God will do a mighty work. Mike, is there an overall message you would like our listeners to hear today? Yes, I uh, would like you to um, have faith, to know that your faith is greater than all the testing and trials going on in the world right now, Um, to trust in the second coming, to look for the one true God for the rapture, that all of your faith and and everything you've ever done with God is going to be of worth in, in the day of judgment, and that everything that you have in Christ this world cannot take from you. Mm. Remember to hold on to your treasures in Christ, just like he said in the gospel, and to trust in God, because with everything that's going on in the world right now, with great trials comes great joy. So stay tuned in, because the Lord, he's going to return, and God's going to do a mighty work. And to everyone listening, I know your faith can be magnified tenfold just by the power of the Holy Spirit right now that's praying over you, watching over you, and blessing you. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Great, Mike. Thank you so much for being a part of the podcast. Thank you, Dallas. I appreciate it. God bless you, and may your work for the kingdom of heaven prosper. Sounds great. Have a great day, Mike. You've just listened to the Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. With your host, Pastor Chris Busher. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast was recorded live in studio with final editing made before uploading. Subscribe today to Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast on iTunes or Google Play. For more fantastic daily content, visit Pastor Chris Busher online via Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Don't miss the next episode on Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast.